First of all, let's let's get this out of the way. I'm just going to pose this question to my husband, business partner, and co-author. Why did it take you so long to write this book? Let's tell the listening, watching audience, they would like to know what the hell is the matter with you? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, first off, let me just say this. It's a thrill being let out of the cave. Um, sunlight is gorgeous. I didn't know Florida was so pretty. Um, our, 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 big, our big joke here is that uh, Andrea handles everything out front. Uh, she's the she's the uh, person who's visible amongst us, and I'm in the office creating content. And so um, it's not that we aren't creating content. It's just that we haven't done anything as a specific follow up to um, to go for no. Uh, over the course of the last twenty years, we've we've written and or published over twenty five books. But as far as go for no goes. Uh, we hadn't done anything as a, as a follow up, and some of those for other people. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've published books for other people as well, and uh, and we've written some fiction. So eleven books that we've written were fiction books. Uh, but why did it take so long to write to write a follow up to Go for No? Well, Go for No. First off, our original book, if you are aware of Go for No, uh, had a very um, sing singular premise to it, and that is that if you will increase your failure rate you will increase your success. And for a lot of people, that is a um, nice theory. Uh, and people have actually said that to us. Oh, that's a nice theory. Increase your failure, you, you increase your success. Well, what we learned very you know, definitively is that it's not, a, it's not a theory, not in any way, shape or form. It is proven fact. If you increase the amount of times that you hear no uh, in the marketplace, if you are, let's say a salesperson or you're, trying to get a, um, a bank loan, or you're trying to get a better table in a restaurant, or you're trying to get your kids to eat their peas, it doesn't matter. If you will increase the number of times that you have people say no to you, you will get better results. You will increase the number of yeses you hear. So that seemed like a big enough message to try to take to the 7 billion people on planet Earth. And um, we probably have 6 billion, 900 million plus that still haven't even read Go for No. So it didn't seem like it was an imperative to write a follow-up to that book. There are some authors out there who feel they have to put a book out every year and they think we they know are the who they are. Yeah, we know who they, are. they are the brand. And then each year that brand puts out a new product, right? They are Procter and Gamble, and each year they introduce a new, a new laundry detergent or whatever it happens to be. We look at it differently. Go for no is the brand. Go for no is the message. And it, we didn't feel it was, uh, we had no compulsion to try to, um, add to, to add to that brand or to write more books. However, all of that said, over the course of the um, 20 years since we wrote Go For No, 23 years to be precise, we wrote it in 1999, we published it in 2000. Um, our publication date for most people, they see it as 2007, because that's when we finally went on Amazon. Mm -hmm. But we had sold tens of thousands of copies of the book even before 2007, just directly, you know, from our website and to uh, companies. Uh, from the time in 2007, and that you know, the, the the book took off. We it was fine. But what we found out was that there were a number of people who um, they kind of people people moved into two groups. Group number one is, oh, I get it. Increase my failure, I'll increase my success. Success is a numbers game. Thank you. And those people, for whatever reason, had the personal makeup, the emotional makeup, psychological makeup to be able to go out and execute that. However, that's a relatively small percentage. That's probably 10%, maybe 20% of the people that we, you know, that we speak to or read the book. The other 80 to 90% of the people would say, oh, I get it. It's a numbers game, but I can't do it. And when they say they can't do it, it means that they still took no personally. They still felt the sting of rejection so great that even though they knew it was in their best interest to dial the telephone or to knock on the door or to ask for the sale, they couldn't bring themselves to do it, at least not to do it as, as often as they could or should. And so we realized that that group of people really needed... Um, they need something a little extra. And we, you know, we've tried over the years to make go for no a little more, um, a little more, uh, what do you call it? Emotion, not emotionally based, but 
Yeah, well, we've we've taken we the went psychological. From, we went from the numbers, just the numbers game philosophy. Gilberto was always kind of a numbers game based philosophy, and I felt like we were pigeonholed into this idea that um, that that's all it was, and that it was just about how many doors you could knock on as fast as you can. And and right. certainly there's an element to that, but the psychology part, the mindset part yeah. also. Yeah. The numerical part is an aha for a lot of people, but the psychological part, the emotional part is the part that people still have trouble getting over. So we came up with this idea. Actually, we came up with the title first, When They Say No. And we said, here's a good opportunity to be able to address what's going on in people's heads when they hear the word no what should you be thinking what should you be saying to yourself and or the person you're dealing with um you know what should you do how do you react and i guess you could say this book is a little more salesy and there's a there's a little bit of go for yes in it and we we fight the go for yes thing all the time there's you know there's a thousand sales books out there that teach you how to go for yes we have a little tiny corner of the market to fill this missing niche, which is the message of you need to go for no as well. And so we still wanted to kind of stay within the umbrella of our topic, but maybe expand outside of it just a just a fraction. Yes. So yes. And and I would add to that. So I had been begging <laughs> for a sequel for some time. Like you need to write a you need a sequel to go for no. And there is still uh, there is still a sequel that needs to be written. There is a sequel in the works. No, it's yes. not in the works, but there is a sequel and it's it's going to be the main character, his daughter. I think it's the perfect sequel. I just need my creative genius over here to pull it off. So, uh, so this is definitely not the sequel. This really is coming out of that idea that what we found was when people start go for no, um, then they want to know how to get go go for yes. They want to know how to get to yes. So as much as we could not go down the okay for throw go for no out the window, uh, there's obviously room for for that. Yeah. So I think you did a great job. Thank um, you. Great job answering that question.